Thank you, Harry. Uh, good afternoon. I'm going to talk about the um, RSV Disease Burden Estimates Project, which we lead uh, here in Edinburgh. Most of you would be familiar with um, this paper, which uh, reported the first estimates of RSV-associated acute low respiratory infections in young children. And this was published in the year 2010. And we use the term acute low respiratory infections to include pneumonia and bronchiolitis. In this paper, we reported that um, globally, in 2005, there were approximately 33.4 million cases of RSV-associated ALRI, and 10% of these were severe enough to uh, require hospitalization, and there were between 53,000 to 199,000 deaths due to RSV-associated ALRI in under five children. Uh, the, as Harry said, uh, there's a lot of interest in RSV globally, and um, it is, it's likely that we'll have a vaccine in five to seven years' time. And there, is a, uh, there was a need to revise these disease burden estimates primarily because uh, following the 2009 pandemic, more um, our, uh, research work on um, respiratory viral infections have been done. A lot of the influenza um, research also uh, uh, has looked into RSV epidemiology. And therefore, uh, we were funded by the Gates, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to set up the RSV Global Epidemiology Network, or the RSV Gen. Um, as part of this revised um, estimates initiative, we are looking at a systematic review of published literature, but also this uh, network, which is a group of investigators uh, from low and middle income countries, uh, they have uh, provided unpublished data. So the data we are collecting are incidence-based data, which are from community-based and hospital-based studies. We also have data on uh, RSV mortality, both in hospital mortality and in general, verbal autopsy-confirmed uh, pneumonia mortality and RSV seasonality data to help with some modeling. And we have um, data from hospitals that do not have a clear um, catchment population, therefore cannot, have, uh, cannot report a denominator, and therefore, these studies um, contribute to uh, the proportion of um, acute low respiratory infections that are hospitalized and are found to be positive for RSV. This is an independent method to verify the validity of the hospitalization estimates, which we will develop from the uh, incidence-based method. The reason why we're looking at this method is there are far more data points uh, from uh, using this proportions method. So in all, we have a data from 70 sites that uh, include data from 73 studies that provide the, uh, the incidence data. Uh, so this slide now looks at the uh, studies that are contributing to the analysis. Uh, we have two kinds of studies. As I said, we have the incidence-based studies and the proportions-based studies. And within the incidence-based studies, we have um, community-based studies um, and hospital-based studies. And in the community-based studies, uh, th these studies use active case ascertainment. The health worker goes house to house to identify a child with acute low respiratory infections, uses the, um, the WHO IMCI um, case definitions. So any child who has a cough or difficult breathing with fast breathing for age would be considered to be having acute low respiratory infection. And if he's found positive for RSV, then this is an RSV-associated ALRI. And uh, if a child who is between tw 2 and 59 months has cough or difficulty breathing with lower chest wall in drawing, then he's considered to be having um, uh, severe acute low respiratory infection. And if found positive for RSV, then um, it's an RSV-associated severe ALRI. Uh, in contrast, you have the hospital-based studies where um, it's a passive case ascertainment. The p parent brings the child uh, to the hospital, and a based on a physician's assessment, a child's um, diagnosis of acute low respiratory infection is made. So as you can see over here, uh, in the uh, new analysis, we have between 60 to 80% of the data which are new, and most of these data are coming from, are unpublished, and they are coming from the RSV Gen Network. Uh, I'll talk a bit about the two different approaches for the hospitalization estimates. So here you have the incidence-based approach, where, uh, wherein you have these uh, studies that report the incidence of RSV-associated uh, ALRI that are hospitalized, 
And you do a meta-analysis at, at a regional level, and then you can use the population data in under five children to come up with the uh, number of hospital admissions for um, RSV-associated ALRI um, at a regional level and, and globally. Alternatively, you could use the proportions positive approach. So you're using studies that do not have a clear catchment population, report disproportions positive um, uh, for um, RSV, and here again, you do a meta-analysis at a regional level, and you then apply this uh, meta-estimate to the estimated number of hospitalized ALRI cases at a regional level. Uh, where do you get those data? These um, data uh, for the uh, at a regional and global level for hospital admissions for severe acute lower respiratory infections in under five children uh, were published in 2013 by our group. So this slide um, provides the incidence estimates for RSV-associated hospitalized ALRI as stratified by two different age groups, um, children less than one year and children less than five years. And as you can see over here, the incidence in children less than one year is approximately three to four fold higher compared to overall under five age group. So we all know that um, the children younger than one year are uh, more um, susceptible to RSV and the disease burden is disproportionately higher in this age group. But if you then wanted to stratify by uh, narrower age bands, particularly if you wanted to look at uh, infants younger than six months who um, are likely to benefit from the maternal immunization, then you see here uh, across all the um, different regions, the incidence in children less than um, six months of age is approximately twofold higher compared to those in the six to 11 month age group. Uh, this slide shows the, um, the proportion of RSV associated um, uh, uh, hospitalized ALRI cases at a regional level. And the, the reason I'm showing this to you is you can see here, it's, uh, you have far more data points. And in particular, certain regions like the Eastern Mediterranean region where there was a data gap uh, in the incidence-based studies, uh, you, you can fill that data gap from these proportions-based studies. So this slide shows the estimate of RSV-associated hospitalized ALRI in under five children, and we are comparing the estimates for 2005 uh, to the estimates for 2012. When I say 2005, we've basically applied the, the incidence rates to um, 2005 population denominator, and for the 2012 estimates, this is an interim analysis using uh, the, the updated data, and we applied this to a 2012 under five child population denominator estimate. And on the y-axis, you have the number of cases uh, in thousands, and as you can see here, uh, the, we have two different bars. We have the bars in green color, which are for 2005, and the bars in uh, blue color, which are for 2012. And the, uh, the, the confidence intervals for the um, estimates for 2005 and 2012, they overlap. Uh, in fact, with the, the larger number of studies in 2012, uh, you have a much more uh, narrower um, uh, uh, confidence interval here. And uh, both at, for a developing regions and for a globally, it's about between um, two, uh, uh, three and three and a half million. This slide shows the estimates of RSV associated hospitalized ALRI in 2012 using the two um, uh, different approaches, the incidence based approach and the proportions based approach. And uh, as you can see here, the, the estimates are largely comparable and um, the 95% confidence intervals, they overlap and uh, as expected, with a proportions-based approach, you have a much more narrower 95% confidence interval. Uh, we've also looked at uh, in-hospital case fatality ratios for RSV-associated ALRI across different age groups. Again, I've stratified this by different age groups in the neonates, in young infants, and then you have uh, for children under the age of one year and um, children between one and five years. And as you can see here, uh, the, in the neonates, um, from 10 studies, we've estimated that the in-hospital case fatality ratio is over 6%. Whereas in the other age groups, the, um, uh, the in-hospital case fatality ratios are largely comparable. 
we're looking at um, different modeling approaches to come up with the uh, in-hospital um, uh, case fatality ratio estimates at regional and at uh, global level. Uh, the, the other way to go uh, and, and look at this mortality would be to look at the possible uh, upper bounds for mortality. We know that between 50 to 80 percent of pneumonia deaths, they occur uh, outside the hospital in developing countries, and um, that sh should be the case for RSV as well. And uh, in our previous estimate, uh, we had looked at the upper bound using a comparative model, wherein we had got the verbal autopsy data and RSV seasonality data from one site in Indonesia, and then extrapolated uh, from those to the, for the global numbers. Uh, here now we have data from six sites uh, from different regions of the world. Sorry. From different regions of the world, and from all these um, sites, we have um, the verbal autopsy confirmed pneumonia deaths and RSV seasonality data for at least three years, uh, and we are uh, working on the upper bound estimates. So in summary, uh, this is an interim analysis which is based on the expanded data set of 85 studies uh, of incidence data, and 56 of these are new to the analysis, approximately 3 million episodes of RSV associated ALRI requiring hospitalizations in 2012, and we have um, uh, 73 more studies that provide uh, in-hospital case fatality ratio estimates. And uh, a rough meta-estimate uh, for developing countries um, is about 1.34%. Uh, we are working on the uh, different modeling approaches to uh, estimate the mortality within and out with the hospitals. And I'd like to acknowledge Bill and, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for funding this project and uh, my, our PhD student, Ting Shi, and our MPH student, Evelyn Balsas, both of whom are in the audience, uh, for um, their uh, assistance, and also all the RSV Gen collaborators.